Those considering property investment naturally worry about what will happen beyond the purchase of an asset. In particular, they are concerned about securing and keeping good tenants, negotiating the rent and ensuring the property is well maintained and delivering a steady income. In the next few minutes, I'll guide you through managing a property over the life cycle. Good property management starts before you buy. It is, of course, about choosing a quality asset that has the characteristics that appeal to tenants. To this end, have a look at these links to learn more about asset selection criteria. But it is also about using the discussions with the agent during the sale campaign and eventually through the use of special conditions you add to the contract to put in place a few vital elements. If you can get this right and then secure the property, you'll have a major head start from a property management perspective. So ensure you do the following during the sales campaign. If the property has been tenanted, find out from the agent the level of the most recent rental payments. Also, what they think the property should lease for in the current market. But don't just accept the vendor's agent rental assessment. Sadly, they are often inflated by 10% or so. Go away and do your own homework. Look online to see what similar properties in the locale are renting for. You'll want to set a realistic rent that achieves an appropriate return, but also gives you a choice of tenants. The property may be for sale with the tenancy lease in place. It's important to check the tenant's history and to avoid inheriting a poor tenant or low rent. Establish, if possible, an early access clause that will cover allowing prospective tenants to view the property in the period between the contract date and before the property settles, or if the property needs a bit of TLC, allows tradies to inspect the property so that they can arrange quotes for work. Ideally, look to negotiate a settlement date that coincides with when demand for rental properties is strong. For instance, late January through to early March is generally when peak rental demand occurs. Find a good property manager as soon as you can, ideally even before you start your campaign to find a property. Try to obtain recommendations from friends and associates. Make sure you interview them as you would a prospective employee. Ask for a rental assessment for the sort of property you are after and an explanation of how they came to this number. At this stage, you're not as interested in the dollar figure as much as what their reasons tell you about their knowledge of the market. Management fees should be around 6 to 8% of the rent and letting fees should cost between one to two weeks rent but don't overweight this criteria when selecting a manager. A cheap manager may cost you a lot of money in other ways. Once you have taken possession of the investment property you've bought, selected a property manager, found a tenant, and they have moved in and are paying rent, give yourself a pat on the back you've completed the hard yards. From here, you shouldn't need to concern yourself with the property too often. The property manager will take this weight off your shoulders. There are a few things you should do to keep the tenancy ticking over nicely. Keep an eye on rental payments to see that they are being paid on time. Tardiness is a bad sign and reflects poorly on the tenant and the property manager who doesn't act on it. Have the property inspected every six months and ask the property manager to provide you a report. And schedule a rental review for the first anniversary and every 12 months thereafter. 
the agent should give you a proper analysis of what the going rent for a property like yours is, backed up with data from comparable properties. It isn't good enough for them to just say, yeah, just raise the rent by $5 or $10 a week. You may still only raise the rent by that amount, or not at all, because the tenants are so great, but the property manager needs to provide professional evidence-based advice for you to act upon. The review should also discuss whether a nearly expired lease should be renewed for another 12 months or whether the tenancy should be allowed to lapse into a month-to-month -month arrangement. By the way, if you do decide to put a new 12-month lease in place, push back on agents who insist on charging large sums for this small amount of paperwork. At some point, your first tenants will give notice to vacate. The challenge is to minimise the amount of time that the property is vacant, whilst also attending to any refurbishment needs. Just as you use the settlement period to best effect when you bought the property, use the tenant's notice period effectively. Firstly, ask the property manager to organise an inspection as soon as possible after the notice to vacate has been received. Attend that inspection with the property manager and determine what capital works are required, if any. Ask the property manager to talk to the tenants to seek early access to the property. Give the agent permission to offer a reasonable compensation in return for the inconvenience, say, the equivalent of a week's rent. You'll want to use that early access to either arrange for tradies to come in prior to the tenant's exit to quote, or if no work is required, to show prospective replacement tenants through the property. In the former case, it should allow you to line up tradies to start work as soon as the tenant exits. In the latter case, it may mean that you can avoid or at least minimise a period of vacancy. By the way, if the refurbishment work is relatively modest, consider showing prospective tenants through before work starts or whilst work is underway rather than waiting until everything is finished. In some instances, this evidence of a renovation will be a good selling point. And of course, once again, it minimises the vacancy period. Also, don't forget to ask your property manager to give you a detailed analysis of rental conditions and their rental price recommendation before setting the rent for the new lease. Ultimately, property management is about two things, capital preservation and income preservation. It's about ensuring the asset is well looked after so that its value isn't compromised by neglect or abuse. So don't scrimp on maintenance or refurbishment. And it's about avoiding periods of extended vacancy that decimate your income and cash flow. This can be minimised by setting a rent that is sensible by market standards and choosing a competent property manager who is responsive to a reasonable tenant's needs.